Well, hey there, I'm Daniel, the Low Budget Outdoorsman. And I know uh, a lot of people have had some tough and difficult times over the last year and a half or two years. Life's hit me pretty hard uh, this past year. So it's been a while since I've posted anything, but I've got something exciting to show you today. And it is this right here, this 1436 John Boat to Bass Boat conversion. It started off like this, and now it looks like this. And I am thrilled and excited about this little John boat right here. It's been a labor of love. I have worked on it a lot and tinkered with it. And I think I've got it how I want it. It's got a 25 horse Yamaha on the back with a heavily reinforced transom. It has the same cooler live well setup as the little 10 foot John boat. It has a bilge pump and an aerator, lights, and a Minn Kota Tarova 55 pound iPilot trolling motor and the same Helix 9 unit right there on a ram mount which I can turn around and see from on the front deck or when I am idling around uh, with the big motor. I've had it out on the water a couple of times and with just me in it and slick water it'll run over 30 miles an hour so it's plenty fast enough for what I'm going to do exponentially better than the little 10 foot John boat that I've fished out of for the last decade. And so sticking with the low budget DIY theme, I'm going to give you a tour of this boat and show you what it took to get from this to this. Stick around. This will be a fun one. Alrighty. So let me give you a tour of the boat here. Starting up front, we have this Minn Kota 55 pound Tarova I pilot uh, that I've been wanting for a long time. Have an aluminum diamond plate deck. I don't have any dry boxes. Uh, I wasn't that uh, expensive and fancy, but I got plenty of storage. It goes underneath there for tackle, for life vests, anything else that I would need in the John boat. And then it obviously will close and lock. I have a front seat up there. There is foam running all underneath this part of the deck here and around the box over here. There is foam. I have the battery compartment right here with two batteries and a fuse that's rated for that trolling motor. And so I have a standalone smaller battery for the helix unit and I have the lights and the trolling motor and the bilge pump wired off of the main battery and a breaker. I have these little locks. I have some switches here. This one's empty, but I have one for the lights, one for the bilge pump, and one for the aerator. And once again, those are wired from in there. Next, I have this rod storage in here, uh, four rods. The PVC pipe here with a flared end. Runs under here. It comes all the way up into here. We still have the cooler as a live well. Same old pump system in there. Back here I have another seat mount. And when I am in fishing mode, I leave the seat, extra seat post here as a support for my new homemade power pole. This part is made from a weed eater shaft. This part is made from weed eater shaft. These are little just aluminum plates here at the top, the middle, and the bottom. And this is a fiberglass pole. Uh, after my last DIY shallow water anchor video, a couple of people suggested fiberglass and uh, so I found an old fiberglass pole and it and it works well for this boat so I can just leave it there like that when I'm just trolling around fishing and then just drop that down leave this part here around this pole so I don't lose this rope and then I just come back here stand and then pull up on the rope and then come back here Throw that little section 
around it. It's a little harder to do with one hand. And that is a very useful low power pole. Coming back now, we have the Yamaha 25 horse two stroke. It's a 2005 model. And to ensure that it could handle it, we have heavily reinforced a transom with a aluminum eye uh, beam basically cut in half. And that is anchored to this aluminum eye beam, which is then bolted to the seat, both on the side and the top. There is a diamond plate support that runs across the top of the seat that is riveted in. And then there's an aluminum strap here that has rivets all the way down it, both on this part and the seat part. And that has really, really sturdied up the transom. In addition to that, I put a, another piece of aluminum over the transom actually two small pieces one that runs from down here up and around to the top right here and then one that runs all the way around and is bent over here so there is the motor transducer fire extinguisher two three gallon fuel tanks seat hummingbird helix unit i've got a little compartment under there just to store things in back up to the battery and the trolling motor made a mount for it to sit flush there and that is sorry about the sun glare there that is a good looking diy john boat right there as you can see when i first got the boat it was in very poor condition it had a a rotting wood uh partial deck on the front and it was painted over top uh, without being properly prepped with some red paint and some graffiti and so the first thing I used was a flapper disc um, and a four and a half inch grinder uh, I picked this up a long time ago Rural, Rural King had a pallet sale one uh, Black Friday and they were I think $29 for these so you can get these uh, DeWalt four and a half inch grinders Pretty cheap if you look for a sale. I also used a metal cutoff wheel to grind some bolts and nuts uh, off. So flapper disc, removed all the paint, got it stripped down to bare aluminum, and then I primed it with a self-etching primer. After the primer, I sprayed this gloss on with just the six gallon pancake compressor and a Harbor Freight purple spray gun. I cut it with uh, some acetone and it actually sprayed a lot better than I thought. Clearly you're not going to be able to spray to an automotive standard with a little compressor like that because it has to run most of the time so you're going to get some water splotches uh, as you spray. But for a John boat, uh, a DIY John boat, not inside a paint booth, it, it turned out really really well and a lot better than you can do with a rattle can. It should go without saying that both wouldn't grinding off the paint and spraying uh, a respirator style mask is really important. It's, I would say, essential. As far as the framing of the deck, the cutting of the metal, I either used the four and a half inch grinder with the cutoff wheel, or I've had this old Echo actual cutoff saw for uh, probably close to 20 years. And I don't use it all the time, but it's been one of the best things I've gotten because anytime I cut metal or uh, concrete blocks or something like that, it really comes in handy. All of them are secured with, once again, a Harbor Freight rivet uh, gun. And uh, I got rivets, I think, at Ace. Um, and so everything is riveted other than some structural things. Uh, use stainless steel uh, screws and nuts. And that is really all the tools I needed to do this. And you could have done it without the sprayer, uh, could have used the spray cans, could have done it without the cutoff saw down here. So really all you need to do something like this, other than having the materials, the drill to drill out 
for the rivets, rivet gun, four and a half inch grinder, Harbor Freight spray gun, the HV LP a spray gun, good dusk mask, compressor, cutoff saw is all that I needed really to do this project. And so it has been a really fun project to go from a boat that was basically a junk to something that is Lord willing going to be useful for many many years to come. I got a decade out of uh, that little 10 foot John boat that I had previously and this 1436 is exponentially uh, better to fish out of than that boat and so I am really excited to get out on the water and do a lot more fishing with this boat, this labor of love, this DIY John boat to bass boat conversion and so thank you for watching I hope this has inspired you to to do a little project of your own it doesn't have to be all the way like this but these projects are so much fun they are so rewarding and you will enjoy them immensely if you take the time to do them and get out there enjoy the water enjoy creation and until next time I'm Daniel the low budget outdoorsman God bless